commission meeting. Uh, just double checking, did everyone sign in? Please do. It is 7 o'clock. Do we have any public comments? Do we have any minutes you want to get taken care of? Nope. Uh, I did review the June 13th, 2022 minutes, but Jane just handed me a revised version, which I have not had a chance to actually review. Okay. <clears throat> what about the mm -hmm. July 11th? They're still being worked on. They're pretty short, but I haven't finished them yet. Okay. Can we get the extension for London Estates done real quick, like? Sure. London Estates, um, I drafted the extension um, for the restoration area only because they've been having problems with it and it's not cooperating and they need it sort of as backup for their revised restoration plan, which, Bill, do you happen to know what's going on with that? I haven't stopped by. So I, I talked to Mark today, thank you. And he, um, they're gonna be in there this week. They've hired the contractor, whoever is a special contractor. And um, he's gonna be in there with them. I don't know what they're doing now, getting rid of all the invasives, I guess. And then he, he left a message, so I'm gonna stumble through this message. What their plan was, was to get in there early fall, and it's gonna depend on the weather. So if it stays hot like this and they can't water, they're not gonna bother going in and doing early fall. They're gonna yeah. do late fall, which will allow them to plant stuff and not require it to be watered. So that's, that's where they're at right now. They've hired it, they're supposed to start this week, but their the schedule is unsure of just because of the other uh, drought. Weather. Okay. So basically that what they're gonna do is they've probably been mowing it, correct? I don't know, Jane. I, I drove by quick at one point and they had mown it and he said he was gonna start by doing that. And uh, then they're gonna go in with the herbicides and do that. And I wouldn't plan anything right now either. Huh. Right. Yeah. So hopefully we'll be able to by fall. Do you have the form? Yes. Really? So I want to make a motion to uh, sign the extension for 157536 London Estates. I'll make that motion. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. In 705, pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, Wetlands Protection Act, and Foxborough's <coughs> Wetland Protection Bylaw, Chapter 267, the Conservation Commission will open a public hearing on Monday, August 8, 2022, at 7.05 p.m. in the Gala Meeting Room, Foxborough Town Hall, 40 South Street, and or via Zoom, on a notice of intent filed by Christopher Gallagher, DPW Director for the installation of three miles of new water main from Sprague Road Wells to the Witch Pond Water Treatment Plant along, oops, okay, along Sprague Road, South Street, and Cedar Street. Portions of the proposed work lie within 100 feet of a resource area. Application is available for inspection at the Conservation Office. Welcome, Mr. Gallagher. How Hello. you doing? <coughs> Good. How are you? Is everybody here today? Good. 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 Um, so I'm Chris Gallagher. I'm the DPW director. Um, so we have an NOI before the board commission tonight. We have a, for anybody that doesn't know a little background, quick background, Foxworth currently has three water treatment plants. Um, they treat for iron and manganese. Um, one of those treatment plants is over at Witch Pond. Um, we also have one additional well site on Sprague Road where we have three groundwater wells that we pull water out of. Um, 
those do not go any sort of, through any sort of treatment. They get some chlorine as they come out of the ground and go into the the, uh, the water mains. And we are looking to bring those three wells down to which pond through a raw water main um, to go through that filter plant. Um, so that then all of the wells in Fox, or all of the active wells in Fox, will be going through treatment um, prior to going into the system. So we've You've had the brown water, in other words. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we don't like that word, but no. it's been a while. No. Um, so that removes the iron and manganese, um, which is you know will cause the discoloration that you sometimes see in the water um, when we have a water main break or or flush and hydrants. Um, so I have with me tonight um, Alexandra Gasper um, and Lydia Kiffner, both virtually, um, to walk through some of the details. They are both um, with Weston and Sampson. Um, Alex is an environmental scientist and Lydia is the project manager. Um, so they're gonna walk through some of the details as far as where we encroach into the buffer zone um, and answer some of the technical questions for you. Okay, thank you. Who wants to start off? Um, I can start, I suppose, am I, do I have um, screen sharing capabilities for this? Can you get a little closer to the mic, please? Oh, um, I'm just going to uh, share my screen, if that's all right. Yep. Okay, so there are a couple areas um, where we encroach on um, buffer zones. So, First one, I believe, we have this, you can see my screen, this perennial stream here on Cedar Street. Oh. Um, Which sheet are you looking but, at, please? Um, this is sheet C-102. 106, okay. 102. Um, so the perennial stream on Cedar Street, with some um, associated BBW there. Um, and then also you see like the flood zone line here as well. Um, the streets will be lined in resource areas. We'll be using compost filter tubes to pre prevent any sort of impact to resource areas. Um, and then you'll see on sheet C104, we're also, we have an intermittent stream on South Street. And another um, bordering vegetated wetland here as well. And then I believe this is our last perennial stream, another one on South Street here close to um, 340 South Street. I believe one more um, on Sprague Road. Yes. Um, like I said, compost filter tubes we used um, within the vicinity of resource areas and all work is occurring within roadway so we're not anticipating any, um, any major impact. Any questions so far? Okay. So I think just to reiterate, yeah. you know, the basics of the project, we're going to start down on Sprague Road a couple of years ago probably six years ago now, we did a 500 feet of water main on Sprague Road coming out of the last well building. Um, we crossed, or actually we directional drilled under that culvert on Sprague Road um, and came up 500 feet. Okay. Um, so we will tie into that existing water main that was done six years ago. We'll come the rest of the way up Sprague Road. We'll take a right onto South Street, go up and over 495, which is 
one of the things that has taken us this long to, to get to this point. We've actually been working on this for close to two years now, and, and MassDOT is kind of the ones that are holding us up. Um, I think we think we're finally there. We have our 100 percent submittal, so unless something drastic comes from them after that, um, you know, we'll be ready to move it forward, you know, this fall. Um, so once we cross 495 on Cell Street, we go all the way down to 106, take the right onto 106 going towards Plainville, and then we enter the driveway for the Witch Pond treatment plant um, and connect to the to the treatment plant um, on site there. So um, you know, Sprague Road we have, we know we have some wetlands in that area. Um, you know, we had dealt with, dealt with them, you know, a number of years ago with that first project. Um, you know, there are three streams intermittent um, along Cell Street and then the um, Rump Wading River Wading. on 106, um, which we have, we're looking at actually going up and over um, and mounting onto that, that bridge Martin, down there. The bridge. Yeah. Um, so those are kind of the basics of the project. Like we said, everything's within the, the paved um, roadways. Um, so it's you know some simple utility work. We'll go five feet deep. Um, where we have to cross those culverts, we'll make adjustments when we know, once we know you know the elevations. If we have to go under them or stay stay above them, um, we'll go up and over or under those culverts uh, at those at that point, um, and hopefully minimize impact on. Not only <coughs> wetlands, but any residents, traveling public that are driving around there. Um, hopefully we finish the West Street project first before this one starts. <laughs> uh, how, how long do you anticipate once you put the first shovel in the ground, put it that way? It, you know, if I had to guess just based on supply issues at the moment, if we were able to bid it out this fall, mm -hmm. um, it'll be a 2023 construction project. So we, we would probably start sometime um, springtime, depending on when we can get pipe. Um, and then it'll, three miles of, of water main with going over 495, it'll probably take the majority of the summer. So are you gonna start from Sprague or are you gonna start from the um, Witch Pond? Um, we, we don't know at this point. Because if it's spring? Yep. You know, there are all those vernal pools and all that other stuff that we don't want to think about down sure. on Sprague. Yep. And so that would be better done towards the end of the year sure. or even during winter when the ground's frozen or something, which you probably don't want to do or can't do. Construction season. <laughs> we stretch it as far as we can <laughs> and start as early as we can. Okay. Any other questions from the board? No. Nope. Do we have any questions from the audience? Just come up and identify yourself, please. Use the mic. You're on TV now, so. Oh boy. Yes. <laughs> um, my name is Joanne Frazier. I live at 406 South Street. Mm -hmm. And I wondered which side of the road are you going to be digging on, odd or even? Um. So I live at that straightaway where there's really four lanes. Yeah. yeah. I believe, actually, let's see. Lydia, you may be able to pull it up. Yeah, we alternate a few times um, depending on where the other water mains are. So Alex, I don't know if you can scroll to 406 South Street. I think at that point we're on the odd side, the odd side. of the street. Okay. <clears throat> yep, because it's the same side Sprague is on, I'm just thinking. Yep. Stay on the same side. <clears throat> and uh, the other question was when will you, you start, which you don't really know yet, and uh, what's the timeline for this project about? Yeah, so it, it, it'll take the majority of the construction season. Um, so like spring to fall? Spring through the summer. Oh, um, and it, it depends, it, you know, there's a lot still up in the air. We have to put it out to bid. Um, yeah. It'll depend on contractor availability. Yeah. Um, so, you know, my hope is that we are able to have it out to bid and it's a construction project first thing in the spring if we can get pipe. Because yeah. depending on pipe supply, that's anywhere from a couple weeks to a year. Um, 
Wow. And three miles of pipe is, is going to be hard to come by. <laughs> so. And uh, I worry about, like, you know, gas lines and things like that. That's a, to me, is a, a worry. <laughs> yeah, so that's, everything's, you know, built in with DigSafe. Um, okay. You know, we, we have on the plans the best of our ability um, of, mm -hmm. of what we could get for records. When the contractor comes out before they actually start to dig, they have to call DigSafe again. They remark any underground utilities uh, All right. prior to them starting to dig. Um, so any, any gas lines will be marked out at that point in time yeah. by Eversource. Because I think the gas lines go, my, my, I'm way back off the road, and the road used to be a curved right up almost to my house. Yep. So I think gas lines are closer. They're right in my I'm basic. sure dig safe <laughs> Underneath, the data yeah, all for the that. Yeah. And um, so I thought it was to increase the water pressure, but it's basically to connect for manganese and iron. Yes. Yep. So that was in that which pond treatment plant was the first one in Fox Road. That one came online in 2008. Um, and that was at the time, the worst area for, for iron and manganese, that's where the, the town was able to get one permit okay. first. Um, Oak Street was built after that, and then the most recent one was Chestnut Street. Um, so we have three out of the four well sites covered. Um, instead of spending what could be, at this point, 12 to $15 million on a treatment plant at Sprague Road, that's this is a, a cheaper, a less expensive option. How much less? <laughs> that's a good question. A couple of years ago, I could say a, a million dollars a mile, so it would be three million. We're probably at least double that. Wow. So, so six million, six million versus twelve to fifteen. Well, why don't you just go with the six? That's what we're doing. I mean, yeah, but you said to go all that way. You would right. So this this pipeline will cost roughly well, it, maybe six million dollars. If we were to build another treatment plant on that site at Sprague Road, it'd be twelve to fifteen. Okay. So this is the lesson. So basically, pond. it's going which pond down to Sprague, and uh, okay, that's and now and our taxes will be affected by this. So this has already been um, bonded for the cost of the construction um, by the water department. So this is covered by you, your water bill. Um, it's, oh, it's, so the water bill will go up? No, it's already been it's already been factored <laughs> into, the, into the rate okay. increases. Just checking. <laughs> It was factured in. Yes, probably two, the water bill three, will go up. This was factored <laughs> well, for the in two or three years ago. Okay, <laughs> everything goes up. All right, well, I guess that's it for my questions. Thank you. Yes, just come on up and identify yourself, please. My name is Ken Porter. I live at 6 Cedar Lane, which so we're at the other end, uh, right across from Witch Pond, um, right at that, uh, right before the Plainville line, basically. Um, so thank you for addressing the timing question. Uh, my remaining questions are with regard to um, blockage of a lower driveway that we have off of 106, um, right across from which pond, basically at that low point in 106. Um, I didn't know, for any given portion of length, I didn't know how long it'll be disrupted. Um, and then also, I didn't know if you would need to store any equipment or material off of the roadway on my property or anyone else's? Yeah, I mean, typically <clears throat> typically the contractors will lay pipe out um, you know, it, for a project this long. It, you know, they'll, they'll probably store it off-site, bring it in as they need it. Um, but okay. they will spend, you know, a day laying pipe out and then, you know, they'll dig and they'll continue that way. Um, again, at this point, you know, not knowing who the contractor is, what their means and methods are. Okay. Um, a lot of that's determined by who the contractor is, but um, you know, I will give you my card and definitely reach out. We can talk some of the specifics. Okay. Kind of offline. Great. Okay. I'm to do that with you. Thanks very much. Yeah. Excuse me, could I have a paddle? Sure. Definitely. <laughs> so one other question I had: um, How are you going to suspend it underneath the 495 bridge? Um, that is something we've been working at for a very long time with Mass DOT. Um, there are actually um, bays built into those bridges under the, under the asphalt. Okay. So we're actually building out another bay to run that water main. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Chris, <clears throat> the 
composite filters, tubes, how do you maintain them? Because they're going to be up for a while along Cedar Street, and that's where the, the significant wetlands, you know, it drops right off. Is there a maintenance plan that a contractor has to know about, or does the engineer make sure that they not only are properly installed, but they have to be maintained if you get these heavy rains and you, know, you get a lot of the sand or silty materials? Yeah, so that's, you know, it is primarily up to the contractor once he once he wins that's the first thing that they will go out and do is is put the um, the compost filter tubes in place um you know we always welcome jane out to do a a visit site visit and you know make sure they're you know where she would like them and install the way she would like them to be um, but after you know once they're ongoing for that duration you know between myself lance um, we will have a one of our water technicians up there as a full-time inspector um, so we'll be there on a daily basis if there's, you know, like I said, any heavy rains um, that come about, um, you know, we'll, we'll be on top of it. Make sure if there's silt built up in a low spot, you know, it gets cleaned out. Um, if any of the filter tubes, you know, start to deteriorate, then um, we'll make sure they get re replaced and fixed um, along the way. Okay. You happy, Jane? I am. I would just like to suggest slash encourage that you start up at Cedar Street. Noted. Thank you. <laughs> also, um, you, what if what if you do find that a culvert has collapsed or something along the way? Would you be replacing them as you go? Yeah, or? we'll repair it if, as needed. Okay. And there are times when sometimes it's just you cut the pipe out of the way and put a new pipe back yeah. in. Uh, you know, do a repair in the in the roadway. Okay. So, so during the drier parts of the year you'll yes. you'll leave those little bits and pieces for anything like this <laughs> yeah wouldn't you like to be doing it now yes and no okay any other questions or comments from the audience you can't close it because there's no number did you get a dep number yet i didn't get one so um that's a good question I have not seen one yet. Okay. Um, I believe we're still waiting on it. Okay. So we have to, we have like to continue it. Continue it. Yeah. I can have an order of conditions ready for the next meeting. It'll be similar to your others, probably. You know, the ones that you had in other places. Okay. All right. I'll make a motion to continue the hearing on uh, water main upgrades, Sprague Road, Twitch Pond, water treatment plan, and why. Uh, August um, 22nd? To the 22nd of August. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> we have 710. We have a continued filing for 2 Washington Street.
today. My question on that. I did. I emailed everybody today. Hmm? I emailed everybody today. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. They'll tell you afterwards, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. For the record, my name is Bill Buckley. I work for Bay Colony Group, and I'm the civil engineer for the project. And uh, what we've um, we filed with you is a revised plan last week um, based on the revisions that were um, due to discussions with the planning board. As I stated at our last meeting, where we met, I don't know when it was, a couple of months ago, in June anyways, um, you know, the, the issues devolved with the commission are relatively minor because there's so, such a small portion of the site that lies within the buffer zone. Um, so we, we asked the board, the commission at that time for a continuation to give us time to go before the planning board. We've been before the planning board several times. We actually have another meeting this Thursday night. And um, so what I'd like to do very briefly is uh, go through the, the changes that were made to the plan, none of which are within the, the buffer zone, and none of them are close to the buffer zone, but I can show them to you here and we can flip through the plan set that I, I hope everybody has. Um, so what, what we have is, um, this is the, the layout. Actually, it's the same layout that I showed you the first time. We haven't changed the rendering because the changes aren't, you know, don't have anything to do with the rendering. But so if you look on your, your plan set, if you want to get a close up on sheets, well, let me just talk about this first. So this blue line here, the light green, of course, is the, the, wet, the edge of the bordering vegetated wetlands. This blue line is the 100 foot buffer zone where the commission's um, jurisdiction lies within. And then the, t the little dot red dots are the 25 foot no disturbs. All of the changes that have taken place to the, to the plan set are over here on the west side and on the south side of, of, the, of the property. And what that involves is if you wanna to go to your sheets, LA two and three, probably uh, maybe, yeah the landscape sheets is what we've done is we've modified the landscaping plan along the west side and the south side of the building and what it did involve was changing some of the plants from hardwoods to um, jolly green giant arborvitaes which my understanding is that's what's behind the town hall if you want to look at them driving by you know so you look at those and so it's um those are the modifications to the plan. The other changes all had to do with questions about, from stormwater that had to do with the basins up front here, which are well outside jurisdictional area. Um, and that's really it. So I can answer any questions you might have to refresh memory. Um, and then what I would be doing is I'd be asking the commission for next, to continue the public hearing again probably till the, whatever your first meeting in October would be. And that would give us time to go before the planning board at least t two more times and see if we can finish ironing out the issues with them. Okay, now Bill, I think uh, in our last meeting, you had said that on the snow removal, you're taking all of the snow out of that 25 or the, even the 100 foot uh, buffer area. So exactly. if you go to your sheet, um, I forget what sheet it is. I think it's probably 6.1. Yeah. Look at sheet 6.1 and look down here in this area. I can't look at that while I'm doing it. It's a delay. Before, we used to have some snow removal or snow storage down here within the buffer zone. And now if you look, you'll see that we're keeping it all outside of the 100-foot buffer. So we've eliminated it in this area here, and we've still kept it around the edge there, which is 100 feet. Okay. And it's, it's hatched in red, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, just as a sidelight, some engineers got to come up with a better way of that cursor. I know. It, make it a different color so it can be seen on the... Yeah. Yeah. What I find a problem is the delay. So you naturally look at that, and it's delayed from what I'm doing here on the screen. But... Mm. So, 
I have no. Uh, what, are, what are the next two meetings? We have a hearing with the uh, planning board this week, Thursday. The 11th. It's the 11th. The 11th. And then they meet again in two weeks after that, right? No, they don't meet again. They only have one meeting in August. So it's in October. So the next meeting. So there's September. two meetings in September. Right. That's, that's right. So I want to meet. I'd like to meet in October, your first meeting in yeah, October. because we have only one meeting in September because of Labor Day. Okay, so yeah. our first meeting in October is October 3rd. All right. My birthday. All right. Oh, I think you're a motion. Yeah. Um, uh -oh. All right, before, any questions from up here? Okay, do we have any questions from the audience? Just come up and identify yourself. And technically, the question should come to the chair. I know I yep, goofed yep. on that. So Carl Condon, 188 Beach Street. Mm -hmm. At our last meeting, I asked you about the storm drainage and the maintenance on the retention ponds and all the um, storm drains that need a regular interview in intervals of maintenance. And I asked you to put in the stipulations of them notifying your board when that is done and the condition of it have you considered that at all i think that's in the order of conditions is it not jane i think that it's included in the minutes as being one of the conditions that we can add having um the reports forwarded yep. to the commission okay you know, when to done. the board so that way us residents can look sure. when it is maintained and make sure it's maintained properly and also at the meeting i asked about the retention pond on steeplechase off of North Street, how it's never been maintained, and the Conservation Commission said that the town would maintain it, and it hasn't been maintained in 20 years. So it looks like the woods that is all around it. So have you found out anything about that to give me any answers? I haven't, uh, but the... But you said the engineer was going to get on it, and he has plenty of money to do it. Did I say that? Yes, you Where did. Where is Staple, Steeplechase? Off North Street. Off North Street. Before Beach Street. Before Beach Street. Okay, okay. Well, uh, let me give you a little bit of uh, Wetlands 101. Back in the day, detention basins were... No, in the, when that development was put in, the town was supposed to maintain it. It was written and documented that the town was supposed to maintain oh, okay. that okay. storm drain. Okay. That's so something that back. I know the DPW is getting caught up on that stuff but they caught up the it's been 20 haven't. years well 20 maybe. years i wish he was still in here we could ask him yeah the guy was sitting there the guy you kind of talked to yeah i know who he is oh, okay <clears throat> i do not have an but answer. that's your job is to conserve the town and preserve wetlands and everything else right and that's the reason why these retention ponds and retaining ponds and retention basins or whatever you want to call them are put in, correct? That's part of the deal. And I believe you were at that, you were on the board back then too. I was, I yeah. was. I remember that, well, there was a, something happened on that one that has changed my mind about a, a few things. And you guys even put a right of way in to have access to it on the people's property on steeplechase that's true so you're screwing the town over by no. not doing your jobs and following up on it and that's why i'm adamant about the maintenance of all this storm drainage and storm drains retention ponds and everything else well, we we have a new dpw manager who is tech savvy a lot of these things i think have gotten lost in the shuffle and their it person yeah, goes I get through that. the deeds yes. and checks out well they have yeah. to find them before they know that they're there. well i'm letting you know that there's an issue yes and there's been an issue okay and i just get pointed this way oh no it's that person it's that person it's this department that department and i'm tired of it <clears throat> and you live tired on of getting beach the street i live on beach street yes lived there for 50 years my whole entire life okay. same address Bill, if I recall to address this concern, in your report the, from the previous original filing, you had in there the maintenance schedule of the tree filters, the basins, the uh, catch basins itself, and also the larger retention basins. And you have very specifically how many times a year 
that it was going to be done and that it's going to be overseen. And I know later on maybe the town might get involved in overseeing that it gets accomplished or it has to be reported to the engineering department that it's been done. Yeah, that's, that's what I want. Right. Because when I asked you about the maintenance, you guys are all fumbling around like three stooges up here or the eight stooges and no one had any answers and you were running around like, Ugh. yeah. By, if I recall, Bill, that, that was in there, and I think it was on the plans too, but I know it was in the report. It's in sheet six, it's at 6.1, that's the, the, the O&M plan, and then there's an appendix to the stormwater plan. Right, that, that one there. That is an operation and maintenance plan, has a long-term operation and maintenance plan, and a construction period operation, operation and maintenance plan, which has all been reviewed by the town's consultant. It doesn't normally get reported at 20 town officials. But, but you it said that you, be but you said that you were going to put it in as me. an you said you were going to put it in as an order of condition right. and we said fine. Right. Because yeah. it should be because big corporations let things little things slide. Oh, we don't have to worry about that. We don't have to worry about that. And then no offense to you, you guys are busy. I understand and it just gets lost in the shuffle. So this way if you guys get an email every time it keeps it at the front of your brain and you're like okay all right they're doing it so if i come up anyone comes up saying hey where are the records on the maintenance of the storm drains for the warehouse you can go oh right here right here right here you know that that's what i just want to make sure it's getting done you know because there is a lot of they track the trailers they leak a lot of fluids to begin with and it's oil it's chemicals our water system's bad enough with all the road salts and everything else. Why make it worse? This way, if it's maintained, getting fixed, it's going to lessen the impact in the groundwater when it soaks through into the aquifer. Okay. Do we know it? Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Somebody want to make a motion to? Oops. No. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't sorry. see. Okay. I didn't see a hand go up. Uh, sorry, oh, I looked sorry. away. I'm start to walk up. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Michelle Cruzy for Tucker Lane. Um, speaking with the Mass DEP, they mentioned that a wetland specialist, a scientist, would be going out to the site. I'm wondering if that already occurred, or um, <coughs> if not, when that's scheduled to do so, because it's a very big difference having a specialist out there during a very high drought season than when we're not in a drought season to get a true picture of what the wetlands, the dirt, everything is like. Um, that's my first question. Um, my second- uh, Let me answer that. The wetlands were delineated probably two, almost two years ago now. November 2021, I believe. Okay, so they, were, <coughs> they weren't just delineated this summer. So. It, the delineation was done 21, November 21. Oh, okay. And a wetland and scientist did it. And a wetland okay, scientist did. did it, and okay, we and checked it. All right, and that's what's in the Norfolk County of Deeds. That was dated December 2021. That must be the paperwork. That sounds right. right. Yeah. Does that sound correct? Mm -hmm. um, is it possible to request when the order of conditions come through that a butters are copied on it to save numerous people calling the Conservation Committee, asking if it's completed? Because we do have what, a right to a 10-day appeal. What do you want copied? Uh, when the order of conditions come the out. The order of conditions. You yeah, want. why don't if you have one main on person it? and that main person could send it around to everyone else? Would that be okay? I'm okay with that, yeah. All right, just let us know. All right. And we'll, give, we'll send you a copy. It's a public document. We, should we have that person come up to you, Jane? Or, or Diana. Diana. Okay, thank just you. get the email because we don't want to send every, because it's, it's multiple people. No, I understand. Yeah, okay. I understand, I but I also don't want 42 people calling your office oh, yeah. every day saying, because we're limited with the 10 day appeal process. Okay. So, um, and then my last question was members, uh, actually, all members of the planning board have been out to the site on two different visits um, last week. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if that's possible for the conservation board. And my point being is you're looking at a map. Mm -hmm. It is not, you're asking about snow removal. You're asking about um, trees. You're being told that trees are gonna be built, especially um, where Mr. Buckley pointed, I'm sorry, on the, the, like that L shape, the left, 
Those are our neighborhoods. It's not okay. a true representation of what is actually there. Okay, but that, unfortunately, as far as we're concerned, no. is out of our jurisdiction. Our jurisdiction only concerns the wetlands. Okay. So the, little, the pale green on the right-hand side of that, the lower right-hand, that is our area of jurisdiction. Okay, so we just have the wetlands. We no control over planning board. Okay, so any of, if this project ever went through, I'll, I'll just say even if there was two diesel trucks there, I mean, with the proposed... Um, parking spaces, I think they said 170 diesel trucks. I think we did the math. It was like even just idling would be like 17,000 gallons of diesel fuel. So that stuff dripping into the parking lot that would possibly go into the wetlands would be your concern? Uh, it's not, the, that is all, the catch basins and all will take mm -hmm. care of that. And uh, I'll let Mr. Buckley do the engineering on it, but Mm -hmm. That's all been engineered in there. So, right. Mr. Buckley, could you come So, Mr. Chairman, yep, yeah, I will uh, just briefly talk about that. So the question would be, is if there was a spill in the parking lot in the back here, what would happen to any pollutants that came out of, the built, came out of any vehicles? So in the rear here, there's, <coughs> there's four catch basins. There's a double catch basin here. There's a double catch basin here. And I think there's a double catch base in here. So everything is pitched from the outside in. So anything that, even if it's spilled right here, right next to the edge of the pavement, it won't go in this direction. There's a curb there, and it goes toward the middle. So there's a, into this catch basin or this one. And then even over here, it would go down in here. And then it's captured. It's run through multiple systems. One, the first is a catch basin, which captures some of the um, pollutants. And then over here in this area here, we have what's called a, a, water quality and a water quality inlet. And that is also a, you know, it captures, again, the total suspended solids, <coughs> any oils and greases. And then it finally discharges into this basin. And in the front of the basin right here, when it's a little heavier green, that's what we call a four bay. So when the water hits the, the basin, that's a, a line of stone. It's about two feet high. That also will capture anything and keep it in that area without letting it to go out. So it goes through a multiple stage system in order to clean it and keep it away. That's why everything is pitched away from any of the wetland resource areas. Okay, and, that, and so I understand that is for anything that might fall on the ground. Um, and what about any particles or such, or you know, 24 seven idling fumes that will travel over the wetlands and, and land there and affect everything. I mean, we, we, we can't be ignorant of the fact that air pollution is gonna affect wetlands, it's, it's gonna affect so much, so much of the wildlife and the greenery and everything over there, and I understand we can't put a plastic bubble over this to, to keep it in. Um, but, you know, I'm just throwing that out there as another, because it, it all falls into place. I mean, it, it's all part of the, the system. And if you guys are sitting here, and I appreciate your time as volunteers on the Conservation Committee, but this is a huge project. And it, it's, uh, it doesn't just stop with the wetlands, it's, it's diesel, it's air, it's um, noise. noise. I mean, that's just, that's common sense. Um, there's just so many factors, and I'm just really hoping that you all take serious consideration that this is, it, it's huge. It's huge, and it may not affect your area where you're living, but eventually this will affect the whole town because the wetlands, the rainstorms, everything. And, and I appreciate all these man-made and these wonderful basins and everything, but I can probably prove, pull up numerous instances where these basins didn't work or they clogged or they backed up or Route 1 gets flooded. I mean, we're relying on man-made stuff to outweigh Mother Nature and it doesn't always work that way. And I have a swale in our neighborhood that proves that. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Johnny Gatani, 7 Willis Lane. What Michelle just said is absolutely, I say, correct. Um, 
is the two warehouses down the end of my street, Willis Lane. They've been there about well, six, maybe seven years now. And from experience, noise, air pollution, I could smell the diesel coming up when that, especially when the northeast winds are blowing over the field. Um, and now I'm getting dead sparrows all over my deck, my yard, and I'm wondering, I'm really wondering if this is from the exhaust. And when that exhaust is really blown, when they got three, four, six, ten trucks down there idling at once, getting unloaded, loaded, whatever it is, um, I'm really wondering, what's going to be next? The blue herons and the Canadian geese dropping? The last meeting we had here, I saw a sad sight. I'm going to work, 5.30 in the morning, I look down, right in front of Dimitri's, right in front of the very old red snapper, right right there in the middle of the parking lot, right there in the middle in the front, a dead baby doe. I'm saying to myself, you know, the woods, all the woods we got behind there and everything else, I said, slowly but surely, it's all getting nicked away. <clears throat> but seeing these dead sparrows now, I'm really wondering, my daughters are asking me what's going on. I, I, I don't know if it's disease or I don't know if it's exhaust. I don't know. But like I say, the noise pollution, everything else, and with this monster going in at 2 Washington, nothing but bad news for the nature, for, for nature also. That safety and nature. I like, like I said last time, I like to keep some woods in forestry in the town of Foxborough. That's why I came from Dedham to come out here to get to the country. But slowly but surely, the country's going. That's how I see it. I like seeing the blue herons and the Canadian geese every morning going and coming from that, that wetlands down there. But slowly but surely, they ain't going to have a home left. So and the catch basins, they're not going to handle all that runoff from all that truck, all those trucks, 100 trucks a day, back and forth, leaking. I've seen it. Like I told you, I grew up on Sprague Street in Dedham. I, I saw those tractor trailer yards, the black diesel fuel. Those basins never got cleaned. They were packed all the time. I plowed those parking lots many a times. They were packed solid. Once it's done, there's no maintenance. There's no preventative maintenance. So I'm just saying, as far as the wetlands, the nature, leave it alone. What we got left in the town, let's just let it be and let, the, let nature enjoy itself like it's supposed to be. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Anything from the board? No. I have one. Uh, Bill, how do tree filters work, but do they actually work in the winter? You get sand, you get suspended solids, you get your lost salt, and then some other stuff. But then the tree is dormant, and basically any type of moisture will be freezing up inside, except down near the, the lower part, which will probably stay 55 degrees or 50 degrees. How does it actually, I haven't read up on the tree filters, so I'm not aware of what they do in the wintertime around here. Well, it's, it, it's a good question. Um, I would say the same analogy is when you have a stormwater basin. You know, they just, in the wintertime, they're frozen. A lot of them are, but you're also not getting runoff in the winter either. You know, so you're talking about you have freezing conditions while you're not getting runoff if it's a freezing condition. So, you know, then you have that transition period perhaps in the spring or maybe in the wintertime when you get that, you know, that weird, you get the freeze and then you'll get a, a big heavy rainstorm. And then you're right, it, it won't work. It will just puddle in that area there or sit in the basin until you get a thaw. Um, for a tree box filter, there, if it's if it's not infiltrating, say you get a really big storm or you have a condition like you're talking about, it will bypass it and still go into the catch basin. So it's it won't just be a, a puddle around the uh, structure; it will go <coughs> it will go into a basin. But you know how it will work if you get one of those freeze and then thaws. You're probably not going to get a lot of of uh, of. Uh, cleaning through that, but it's the same thing as a stormwater basin. It will, it will, it will by bypass, 
go into the catch basin, then go into the stormwater basin. So for that portion of it, you won't get the treatment that is expected. But it's pretty much almost anything in Massachusetts, anything like that. You know, there's anything that has to do with infiltration, you're gonna have those certain conditions where, or certain times where you're not gonna have the, the functioning as optimum as you want. But it is an approved system. It is, um, it is recommended by the DEP stormwater standards. Um, it's been approved in other states as well, northeastern states like New Jersey. So it is, it is a good comment. So the, the big basin, is that gonna be very similar to the one off of 140 down by the, the plaza where the Starbucks is? It's a Over dry basin, side. yes, it's a dry basin and it has no outlet. Um, you can't have outlets because it's for the same reason as this, the one on, um, did you say Starbucks? Are yeah. you talking about the Central Street side? Yeah. Okay, the Central Street side, those two big basins, those are stormwater infiltration basins and I've never seen, I didn't design them, but I've never seen outlets. I know they used to have outlets from that big parking lot into the state and the state is for telling everybody or forcing everybody to um, to disconnect them. And that's what we've had to do here. Right now there's an 18 inch drain connection into the state system that drains um, the existing facility as you're looking at it from Route 1, the left <coughs> side, the north side. We have to disconnect that and we have to infiltrate everything on site. So basically it's gonna be a dry basin. They have to maintain it more Make sure it doesn't clog. Um, you know, you'll have to go in there and sometimes disc it or, or dethatch it. That's what happens is, is it requires maintenance like anything else. Yep. Nope. So we want to continue this to what? Uh, oh. Is, okay. Uh, Bill Mata, 21 Meadowview Road. Um, my neighbor, Michelle, who lives on Tucker Lane, the, the reason why she asked if you would like to have a site visit, um, what would have brought up, been brought up on that, that meeting, um, Tucker Lane has a lot of ledge. There's a couple houses that are elevated up above. Mm. So in the event there is some runoff, you know, it, could there potentially be runoff seeping through the ledge and then ultimately ending up in a residential neighborhood. Well, that's, oh. that's I, again, exactly. I don't know if there's been a study on ledge, but it's, it is known because when those houses were, were built, hmm. they had to blast. So that's, that's one of our concerns as okay. well. Okay, that's, that's beyond our purview. No, right, right. Yeah. I just, so, I'm, I'm yeah. just talking runoff yeah, okay. potentially if yeah. Everything doesn't work. That, that's all I'm picking yeah. up. So, um, I think one of the uh, water requirements, or stormwater requirements, is that no more than is there now can right. occur. So, okay. right. thank you. Mm -hmm. So another hand up. Uh, Tom Kelly, 24 Meadowview Road. I'm um, just curious with that snow storage, is that off the pavement up to the buffer line? It's out of the 100 foot buffer as far as. So it's off pavement. So it will melt down into the wetlands. Um, yes, that's yeah. correct. Okay. And the wetlands, do they extend into that Davis farm? It looks like that. Where they have livestock? Just curious. I'm not sure how yes. they do go into. Okay. Okay. They I just want to make sure you knew that there's livestock there roaming that. Yeah. whole area down there. Okay. That's a farm right here. <clears throat> Michelle Fluzzi again. I just need clarification because when Mr. Buckley keeps saying they when it comes to the basins, I'm just curious who they is. Is it the people who own the property, the people who will be renting the property? Um, will be responsible for cleaning these basins and what does what will the town be able to 
I mean, at that point, does the town have any right to oversee that at all or hold anybody accountable if they're not doing their job? Jane, do you have an answer for that? I was looking up Steeplechase Road. I'm sorry. I wasn't oh, that's okay. <laughs> I, uh, I'm used to that. Okay. I have a 15 year old at home. I'm used to being ignored. <laughs> so am I. I hear you. Um, I'm sorry. Would you, no, would my you question, ask again? My question is regarding Mr. Buckley keeps saying they are going to be clearing out the basins. Mm -hmm. So I want to know who they is. I, I, because this is a property that is obviously going to be rented, even though we don't know who it's going to be rented to yet. So I want to know who's responsible for doing, who's responsible for the upkeep, who's responsible for the maintenance, who's responsible for replacing a part when it's broken and all of this stuff is backing up. That's a good question. Um, Thank you. A lot of the time, uh, the town does not want detention basins and such for this exact reason, that they are hard to keep up. Mm -hmm. Um, the DPW is up to their eyeballs and work as it is, not to make excuses for them. And I think it's, uh, in the past, it was unclear as to what exactly was supposed to be done. <laughs> <laughs> That's what my nine-year-old does. No. <laughs> um, there's something new that uh, it's, it's called, um, there's a stormwater discharge, it's called NIPDES, it's a shortened term. Um, that municipalities needs to comply with. And so the town under their new engineer and their new DPW manager have made great strides, but Rome wasn't built today. It, no, I, and I understand you know, I think that. before they had little pieces of paper here, there and everywhere rather than digitized stuff and, and um, they've been working on it really hard and I'm kind of impressed, but it's a frustrating question because so did you just answer it? Because I don't think you did. Sort of, kind of. I didn't wondering really. Who the they is though. Is it the rental property or is it the people who are owning the property? Is it the? I think it's however something. Person that they're responsible for it, and you guys can put that in writing with this contract that the owners of the properties are responsible for the maintenance front, yeah. of the storm drainage system. You can put that in your stipulations. I think that's something the planning board would do. We so, have this much jurisdiction on this, this site, the commission exactly. does. Well, no, if you can't maintain something, then it shouldn't be put in, correct? This so it's if I put in a Wait, pool, whoa, 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 whoa. maintain it, so I yeah. put it in. So do, right. who has this. who has jurisdiction? Like who would answer this question regarding the basin? Would it be I think you it would be all, planning board. Or would it be planning board? I think it would be planning Mr. board. Mr. David has asked the question, so I just want a clarification on who the they is. And would you be able to oversee it all? And I understand DP, like everybody's stretched thin right now, but. We review stormwater information, except not in a big way. That's something that the planning board does more, the information in the filings. Okay. And correct me if I'm wrong. I, that's zoning. Uh, we do non-zoning, it's called. So I'm kind of like, okay. don't know anything about zoning. So we should be talking yeah, to the Until you recognize. All right, all right, sorry. Okay, I'll get up now. Thank you. Thanks. If you keep it civil. I can keep it civil. Not yelling from the back. Mr. Chair. Yes. So, us talking to you about the maintenance of the storm drains, you have no control over, is what you're stating. You cannot put it in the stipulations of your conservation commission for maintenance on these storm drains to be reported to you. We can put anything we want in the order of conditions. Then will you put that in, that the owner of the property... That is not really our jurisdiction. I was you asking, just... asking for reports is one thing. Requiring mm -hmm. certain things like stormwater okay, so that's reviewed by what? the planning board so the is planning not board. part of it. So, so we have to tell the planning board that we want the owners of the property to be responsible for the that's maintenance. That's something that you would bring up at their hearings, yes. Okay. See, I figured it would be conservation because it would be water runoff, dirty water, storm water, which you guys but are in it's control. Out of our jurisdiction, it fits not in the wetlands. They control the the catch basins as site design. Right. Site design. So instead of me sitting here wasting my time, you could have told me at the beginning that I have to bitch at the 
<clears throat> planning board and not you guys. I tried to be polite. So. No, yep, you could have yep, just said, yep. that's not our department. You okay. got to take it up with the planning board. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. That's it. And it would have ended all this crap. Correct? Possibly. <laughs> okay. Good. But I'm still going to stay on you about the retention pond on Chase Lane, Steeple Chase Lane. Lane. Okay. That's why I couldn't find it. Yes. Yeah, Steeple Chase Lane. Lane. Okay. Sorry. I didn't think I said Lane. I don't know. I, I put, lane. I wrote Steeple Chase. There you go. Lane. Lane. Detention basin, and then yep. and I looked it up, and I'm like, it's not right. showing. It was like 20 years ago. Okay. okay. Something like that. All right. Thank you. No. Let me just say, uh, but no, please. Uh, okay. Don't. All right. Two minutes. Oh, I asked Bill. Hello, Donna Penny, 14 Meadowview Road. Um, so I just noticed from the drawings that they're not even showing the wetlands that are behind Michelle's house on uh, four Pickering, right? Tucker. Four Tucker, you're Four Tucker. There's wetlands all behind her house that the drainage um, system, he's not showing a drain on our side, on the residential side to prevent the, the, the runoff from um, employee parking, I guess. And it's very elevated in that corner where they fit up against the residential area. So Mr. Mott is concerned that how are we going to make sure that no additional water hits those drain at that drainage area and not go into the wetlands that are behind Michelle's house and how it's not showing on the wetlands how close they are I'm not sure about that but the wetlands that we're concerned with are the well, ones that on are within drawing. their jurisdiction so I'm not even positive where Tucker Lane is so there's wetlands between the two cul-de-sacs that's why there isn't those cul-de-sacs aren't joined is my understanding right well, basically, we, okay, so Wetlands 101, we reviewed where the wetland line is. You, we t I usually tell people the first step is to get a wetland delineated, and that's where you say the lines are here according to the science, um, the wetland lines. Once that appro that's approved, an engineer or consultant can figure out what their actual constraints are so that it saves them engineering monies and such. It's a good first step because then they can't complain that they didn't know. <coughs> so that's been done. The wetlands at this site, and I, I can't stress it hard enough, is the wetlands on the site, they're not pitching any of the stormwater or anything towards those wetlands. Well, the ground pitches itself. He can't predict but where that water is going to go. It's going to be impervious. But those wetlands and such. between Tucker Lane and the other cul-de-sac are way out of the jurisdiction of this project. It's, from this drawing, I can see the, um, the her house is that yellow, right behind her house. It's right where that corner is of that building. I don't think it's that far from where you're talking. So the yellow, um, so that's, was that the Guard Motel? What's that other yellow building? Is that Dunkin' Donuts? So straight below Dunkin' Donuts, back there is all wet land behind Michelle's house, and it's not showing. So no, over more. So go towards the yellow box and go straight down, right where your hand almost is. Yep, right there is all wet, and that's pretty it's close far, to. It's much more than 100 feet from our More than 100 property. feet. So what's to prevent the drainage system from that neighborhood goes right behind Michelle's house. So there's but no that's... basin that he's told, there's, he hasn't shown us any basin on the employee parking side, is my concern. Okay. Like me to go over? Real brief light, yep. So the way it works is the runoff from the parking area, there's a set of catch basins through this area as well. And what happens is, is it starts back here and the, on any of the runoff from the parking lot goes into a set of catch basins that is piped like this, is piped out here, and is piped to this basin. This is a berm. <coughs> so between the basin and the pr property over here, the berm is anywhere from 6 to 13 feet high. There's no water going to be coming from the parking lot toward that property. The other thing that the commission, I think, knows as well is the site, all the stormwater analysis has already been analyzed by the town's consultant. And other than a few very small things that they asked us to do, um, has been signed off by them. We expect on Thursday night to have a, a clean, fully clean response from them. So as you pointed out earlier, runoff cannot go 
in any direction off the property at a rate greater than is happening today. Well, we've all seen these catch basins on the side of the road. They're eyesores, they're full of standing water, dead animals. So, of course, we're concerned on who's maintaining it. And again, yeah. we've, we've asked that question to make sure it's maintained. I mean, there's one behind the Aherns full of trash. There's one at the end of North behind Stop and Shop. You can't even tell it's there. I mean, none of these, you're promising us the world. They're going to have this great drainage, and we don't believe any of it because we know it's pitching. We know there's ledge there. He's taking all the trees. Uh, we have a friend just off of Hollowell. His neighbor took down two trees. Now his basement floods from two trees, and it hasn't flooded in 60 years. So now you take two trees, it's just going to flood that area. So that's our concern. Thank you. One last. <clears throat> One more comment, please. Um, in the winter time, especially this being a warehouse with semi tractor trailers, semi tractor trailers need pure black pavement to get traction in a warehouse parking lot. As when I when I plowed back and dead them back down in the manor section in Reedville, we always were told to keep that the, the tar had to be black so that the trucks would get traction. So salt trucks were coming in, rainstorm, freezing rainstorms, anything. So you've got to think of this contaminated snow with all the salt that's going to be in the snow. And like Donna said, you know, you're going to be piling it up against that buffer zone and it's all going to melt. And that salt's going to just spread and spread when the spring thaw comes. And who knows where it's going to go. But you kind of know where it's going to go. So I just want to point that out too. Thank you. Anyone else? Should we continue to October... Third. Third. Ten three. What time? Uh, I'll put seven fifteen just in case we get filings. Make that motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Uh, Bill, the meeting Thursday, is that still at the, at the high, high school, school. Or is it going to be here? High school. High school. Okay. All right. Thank you. We have a partial certificate of compliance. No. No, that's um, been taken off. I put that on the agenda as a courtesy. They were. It's for a house sale. They were trying to work out the paperwork. It's not worked out. So. Okay. Yeah. There's something in there too. There's a construction permit. Uh, Okay. So, so I don't know what will happen to that. Um. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else then? Mm -mm. Um, I got a couple of quick things. Edwards Road yeah. ramp. Oh, they've moved the rock again. Oh, they have. Who's okay. they? We don't know who they is. Somebody with a winch. Um, wow. So, I mean, uh, I, I assume we're going to continue to keep it carry on that's the real question so we'd like to carry to, yeah, yeah yeah I don't see any reason. if we try to do trailers down there they're gonna it's they're gonna destroy the ramp we well it would be if they, we moved all the rocks uh, we, don't it, wanna, we don't want we don't want to it's deep enough sometimes but not all the time but you're right no that's an issue there too but people don't know that till they put their vote in. <laughs> and they take it off the trailer and it won't go <laughs> so we'll just keep moving the rock back I guess is my yeah. conclusion uh, they did put a nice bench down there. Oh, good. We, uh, Rick had to, Rick Lewis had to do two tries to set the cement because uh, kids came down and or someone came down, drove through it and threw it in the lake. I mean, in the uh, in the stream. Oh, you're kidding me! But this time we were successful. Got it on the benches up. That's um, a challenge. <clears throat> uh, map at Lane property. Do we still want to proceed with that? Excuse me. The map at Lane probably yeah. of the. Uh, and what about it? Yeah, if if we could get one there, it would be. A, All right. Yeah. Right. We talked about using the conservation right, funds right. for it. Is it something you want me to do, or is that just something I remind you now and then on? You tell uh, me. Uh, I can give you the details. I don't know what you're talking about. What's going on. Uh, who ordered it last time? Rick Lewis or Napasa. 
Reservoir Commission or whatever. Yeah, if you send me all the information or send in Diana all the information, we could probably order it and get it done, right? Was this like a flyer or something? Sure, yeah. No, no, it's a it's an actual it's already, already has it. map of the reservoir. It's what? Already, no, no, it's already been created. It's been created. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, they signed it. No. I'll get it to you tomorrow. I gotta copy it and such, you know, send it to the DEP. <laughs> Good night. Good night. So who ordered and created it then? It's already been done? Uh, they've already, uh, they've got a large one and a small one at uh, Hersey, a large one at uh, Edwards Road. Edwards. And a smaller one at Hersey Point, a Kersey Point. Right, and you say it's already been created? No, uh, oh, I, I have all the information <laughs> oh. to You have the information order it, to, to order who, another one. Who to order it from and, and cost, or the cost as of, as, as of that email anyways. I would okay. suggest that <clears throat> let the committee go ahead with all the, you know, proper information, order it. This is lane property, though. Right. Is us. Well, it's Percy it really, it really, David, it, it needs to be approved by the commission um, because it's coming from the conservation fund, and it, it fits in with your whole, you know, education. I, I can right? follow through and do it if you want me to do it. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. Well, That's everyone wants one of these at the lane property. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. I would have them do it because they got the experience and they put two us in already. And well, no, no, no. The, the, I order it, and the people come. They make it, and they, they make install it. And it and they they install do everything. It. I don't do nothing, <laughs> except send an email. To who's, somebody. who's paying for it? That's yeah. What yeah. yeah. yeah That's, it's just how to so process. Diana it through the knows town. all the paperwork that would need to be done. Yes, you have to get an invoice and stuff. She's my she's my expert. Right. I'm I'll come in and talk to you, Diana. Later. Thing. We'll figure out. Is, if this is a vendor we haven't worked with, I need a W nine form okay. to get them paid. Um, all right, I'll talk to you later about it. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. everyone wants yeah, to Yeah, I rely on her for all this stuff. I'm, yeah. All right. Very good. That's her thing. And uh, I'm just going to keep mentioning this. Uh, <laughs> uh, 20 Ridge Road. Uh, is he still doing it? No, it's just still open. We never closed it. We, we were just ignored. We need to find some process in which we shouldn't be just ignored. Yeah. <clears throat> it's discouraging. So, I mean, it's. I mean, I we mean, still have others at, at Bragg Road and things like that, and and they're, you know, they think I'm picking on them if I ask them to do anything, and it's, it's, it's difficult. It's just frustrating. You spend all this time, and you know, nobody obeys it anyways, and just does what they want, it. and they thumb their nose at you. Tell me about it. Did you all right. This thing in? I'm done now. Uh, it's Jim. Jim, the MACC online handbook, do you use that? Uh, I, I, I do occasionally, yeah. All right, so you want that renewed? What's the expense on that? $15 for a year. Oh, my. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right. Your tax dollars paying for it. Anyways. No, I have to. No, do they update it? Do they update it? I have no they idea. They haven't updated it. Uh, Hopefully they will. Well, they add. Sometimes they add little sections of. They haven't for a long time. No. Oh, I, I mean the major. The major part of the of the expense is belonging to this thing. It's only fifteen extra dollars to get the online thing. But we have to do it as a separate line item. So that's why I was asking hold everybody. On, yeah. I have. If anyone needs it looked up, they could say, Jane, would you look this up for me? <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca said she wanted it because she's, well, she's new, new and she yeah, wants to she read should. it. Everybody else said no. So. Okay. Okay. okay do we have anything else? Mm -hmm. Motion to adjourn. Take that motion. Second. Uh, wouldn't you have a fair? Let's oh, adjourn. That's what I want to talk about off camera. Uh, All in favor? All in favor? Uh, Aye. Opposed? None. Good night, Mr. Beck. <laughs>